Oh. Uh-oh. Watch me, Jonathan. I got you, brother. Come on. Come on, Come on. Hey. Oh, you all right? Yeah. Oh, so tired. That, that lead is sketchy, man. Um, hi everyone, my name is Devin O'Day. And I'm Daniel Mitchell, and together we both fail a lot. But before we get into that, we're going to tell you a little bit more about ourselves. So yeah, as was said in the introduction, um, I spent the last five of seven years studying biochemistry and philosophy at the University of Arkansas. I was going to go to medical school, that was my path, that's what I knew I was going to do, I felt comfortable in that. But at the same time that that was happening, an outdoor clothing company that we're involved with was really finding its feet and taking off. Um, at some point in that transition, I had to make a decision from going what I knew and what I was comfortable in to jumping into something that was completely unknown. And today I stand in front of you as a director of media marketing for that company. For me, I spent five years at the University of Arkansas cutting, studying mechanical engineering. And at some point, I set down my pencil and my calculator. I picked up a video camera and I haven't gone back since. So what I do now is videography. Yeah, so the reason that we showed you all that failure in the first place is we want you guys to ask a question. Why are these guys failing so much? Well, the answer is pretty simple. It's in our nature. It's in our nature because we have purposely taken ourselves out of our comfort zone and placed ourselves into an area of chaos. And because of that, we are naturally going to fail. Yeah, and we are no different than anyone that works with our company. Um, up here you can see everyone that's involved with what we do. I like to call this the, the wall of lost boys, in the sense that everyone is involved in some aspect of the company that they had no professional, vocational, or educational experience in. Not only are they fulfilling that role completely, but they're developing it with the, role, with the growth of the company in such a way that you can see their personalities really unfold into their roles. In a very real sense, they are following their dreams and creating them every single day. So on that note of dreams, Martin had a dream, Kendrick had a dream, I have a dream, Devin has a dream, and I'm sure all of you have dreams as well. And because of that, we get asked often, how did you make the jump? Yeah, so people can tell when they're talking to us that we are doing what we were always meant to do or something like that. Um, we spend a lot of time on the road as a result of our job. We, we have really interesting conversations with friends, strangers, new acquaintances, business relationships, uh, relatives, you know, the whole lot of them. And every time somebody learns our story of us jumping into something that we were really familiar into, something that was our dream position, uh, they always ask the question, how did you do it? It appears that everyone has something, big or small, that's inside of them that they want to bring into the world. The point of this talk is to talk about not just that jump, but the habits that we have found after that jump that make that experience, experience especially enjoyable. But before we go any further, there's a little disclaimer. We just want you guys to relax. Yeah, so before you would make any kind of jump into following your dream, you have to relax. You have to let go of any notions of who you are or what society expects you to be, uh, what your parents have always told you you need to be, what your friends, relatives, or even yourself is constructive of what you have to do. You have to let go and free the mind. I strongly believe that the mind's presupposition of what it is and is not affects or limits what it one day can become. So you have to relax to be able to enjoy the whole thing. And remember, there are no rules. What we're about to present to you are not rules. They're just things that work for us, and they might work for you. If they're not, if they don't work, make your own. Um, the point is relax. So we're all going to take just one second to relax before we get going. And then you're going to exhale. You're going to take your opposite hand to your mat. Turn your toes back up for crescent and twist. Take your right fingertips to the sky. Good. Okay, so now we're going to talk to you about the constitution of chill, and this is what makes us, us. And basically, this is a way for you to pursue your dreams and relax while doing so. First on the constitution of chill is the jump, or when you dedicate completely. So we're hoping this video makes you feel it, but the point 
of this section is you have to jump. You cannot hold back. Holding yourself back will not let you go with the ebb and flow that the chaos that you're going to go into is going to demand. You have to do what you need to do to make that transition possible. Um, anticipate this transition. Just like you anticipate the ground when you're going off a jump, um, anticipate the transition of the world that you're going to go into. To make an analogy for this transition, we have another video to show you what it feels like. So just like jumping off a cliff is supposed to be fun, following your passion is supposed to be fun. You know that you're going to go between two different realms, the one that you're familiar with, the air that you've always breathed, and you know how you operate your life, into another realm that you're unfamiliar with. With the water, you can only see the surface. You don't know what's below it, but you're doing this because it's fun. A lot of the big thing that holds people back from making the jump is the, that, that free-falling feeling of they don't know where they're going to go. Um, the point of this particular video is to show you that once you make that jump, you're going to do what's necessary to make that transition. You're going to hold your breath. You're going to get ready to swim. And a lot of people want to know, when do I know when I've made that jump? How do I know I'm on the right path of following my dreams? Just like you know when you've hit the water, you will know when your life is orientated such that your, pri your passion is your priority. So the next step in the constitution of chill is to rise or to awaken your passion. <laughs> I don't know. Not yet, probably. Come on, George, man up. Man up, brah. Put your purse down. But I got this beanie on. <laughs> you just go all the way to the top? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a little deceptive. I never quite go far enough. There, there it is. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> Full extension. So we wanted to use this word rise to invoke the feeling that right when you jump, you're immediately going to start rising. You will never be more experienced or more unexperienced in that new world that you've thrown yourself in than that first moment. Right after that, you're going to tar start taking lessons in. You're going to be learning things. You're going to be ascending in knowledge that make you more and more comfortable with that. Have fun with that. Channel your inner child while these things are happening. See the world with fresh eyes so you can begin to develop this heightened sense of awareness. That awareness is going to be very important for you to recognize the things in the world that you're drawn to. So the next step in the constitution of chill is to look around or to find opportunity everywhere. Crazy, right? Woo! Look at that view. Just look at it. Don't get much better than that. All right, so let's learn about what this was. So in this situation, we found ourselves in unknown territory in unknown territory and we're taking it in and it's amazing. And then at the end I asked, let's find out what this was. Um, it's a reminder that the immediate is very important, but think about the past of, of everything that you're experiencing so one day you can affect its future. Um, this is finding opportunity and information in everything. Look for what is overlooked in the world and find value in it. Re-experience the world, awakened by your passion that you've jumped into in a way that makes the mundane beautiful again. Share those beauties, and that's a bringing value into the world. Search for the dots that represent you. Those are things that your passion are drawn to. Connect with those things within yourself, and then begin to bring them together um, and connect them themselves. So our next point is to connect or to build your ship. So here we have one of our good friends, Clem, beginning the pro process of uh, refurbishing an old car and making it his dream car. This is a great um, analogy of what we're talking about. He, in this process, he's taking something that might like, look like junk to other people and bringing in elements, you know, um, upholstery, different steering wheels, different gas pedals, all that kind of stuff, bringing it all together and putting it in a way that when he's done, it's not just another car in the world but it's Clem's car, and you can feel his presence in it. Do that with your internal connections. Um, as you're bringing things together, prepare for obstacles, because if they're not already connected, there's a reason for that. It needs you to connect them, and sometimes there's going to be obstacles. The first solution that might enter your mind not always work. Don't be dissuaded by that. Remember, that's just one perspective that you're looking at, one degree to approach the problem with. Remember, there's another 359 degrees that you can solve it. Um, if you do it this way, then you will learn from your obstacles, and they aren't even things that will stop you. They're just opportunities for new um, perspectives. 
So when you're connecting things, always look at new angles and connect them authentically. Don't force anything because this is going to be the ship through which you ride life and you want it to be strong and powerful. So the next step is to organize or to create your network. So here you see a bunch of passionate rock climbers, and if you were to pluck anyone out of their group and put them in this room, they would stand out as unusual, eccentric, or some people might even go as far to call them a freak. Uh, they're dressed up in all sorts of crazy ways that doesn't make sense until you put them with respect to the rest of your, their community. If you have a passion, find your freaks. Find the people that are freaking out about the same thing you are and interact with them. You'll be inspired by them. You can learn from what they've learned. And it's just really important to collaborate with the world. You've connected thing, things internally, now connect externally with what's already out there. Collaborate. Respect the ex existing community if you want them to respect what you are going to bring to the table. So the next step on the Constitution of Chill is to galvanize, or to allow your passion to shine. I love shredding the gnar because it feels like you're in a video game inside your head, but it's in real life. You're going 40 plus miles per hour down a mountain as fast as gravity will take you. And when you can hit that fresh powder, it feels amazing. There's nothing else that can beat it. Um, I love surfing because the, when you're paddling out, you're, you have this real scared feeling and the intensity of duck diving under a huge wave, but knowing that same wave is what you're trying to fight to ride on is this real feeling that you can't really get from anything else. And so, you know, the being scared getting out, but then feeling so good and tired when you get out there and knowing when you see that next set come, that you just need to have to try even harder, paddle in and drop in, and then you get that ride of your life. It's the most exciting feeling you can ever have. Uh, I love yoga because of that exploration. Uh, every day you find something new inside of yourself, and you get to do things that you never thought was possible. It's growth physically and mentally, and I uh, just love it. Yeah, so we asked our coworkers what they were passionate about, talk about what they love, so we could feel what that feels, or see what that feels like when you know, someone's passion is coming out of them and they're communicating the world. Do that with your project. You've internally connected and made it sound. It externally makes sense with the world. You're not done yet. You have to make the ordinary extraordinary if you want people to feel your sense of self in that project. A lot of people wonder, how do you make that gap? How do you go from... A, ordinary to extraordinary? The answer is very simple. Shine your passion into your work. Allow your light to reverberate throughout the entire structure of everything you do. Be excited what you're doing. Uh, excite other people while you're doing it. Um, if you channel your passion into what you're doing, it will transcend just another object in the world and people will feel you inside of that. Um, basically make it electric so other people can feel it as such. And so for our final point, we have Amplify or Share Your Dream. And this is one of our favorite ones. Yeah, so at this point, you know, everything, everything you've made is connected with the world and it's electric and your passion is shining through it and you might feel like you're done. You're not. Continue to develop your concept. Go beyond its original conception. Share your passions, sharing your passions with others is a very good way to do this. Work with the people that inspire you so that you might learn in what took them 30 years and five years. Respect the wisdom of the ages. There's lessons everywhere within them. On the other side, if you're inspiring other people, never think that you're too big to have those kind of conversations. Some of the biggest opportunities can come from the smallest of places, and there's always lessons that you can relearn by teaching others. In general, just work with passionate people. The ideas that spark out of those conversations are some of the most amazing things I've ever found. So when I first made this jump from medical school into um, this unknown path that I'm on with my friends right now, at first it was really scary. I had no clue what I was doing and I felt like I was way out of place. But I relaxed, and I calmed down, and I began to see all the opportunity that was in front of me. I, I began to see all the ways that I can, could, tr could contribute to the world and ways that I could positively affect it. Boom, my mind exploded with dreams and aspirations and everything that I wanted to do and put into the world. Now, when I first had those ideas, it seems like there was miles of fog, thorns, and cobwebs that stood between me and those dreams, um, obstacles that would slow me down. That's the difference between your comfort zone and navigating the unknown. The life that is guided by an overattachment to comfort based on the familiar is one that's very structured, has a proverbial ladder to climb, routine to maintain, or path to walk on that is known to be safe. The path of following your passion, becoming yourself, offers no such structure or sense of knowing what the future holds. 
And we wouldn't want it that way even if we tried. So now we purposely get lost on trails. If the fog takes us off course and we get lost, we pause, we reorientate ourselves, learn from that new perspective, and try to either get back on path or make a new path based off that new perspective. If a thorn pricks us and we see that we're bleeding, we pause, we look at the blood, we remember that we're alive, we're here to do something with our lives, and to remember the lessons of the pain and move forward. If a cobweb stops us in our tracks altogether, you pause, you pick off the pieces, you see what they're made of, and you move forward. Every once in a while, you will take an unafflicted step forward, something that represents you going towards your dream and you creating yourself into the world. For us, it's one of the most enjoyable things we've ever found. It brings substance and meaning to a world that can sometimes feel like it is filled with emptiness and chaos. Um, it's a path towards creation, and for us, that creation looks something like this. This is our world, and we would like to invite you to create your own. Thank you. Thanks.